Ugh, okay, today is finally the day. We are finally talking about this, even though I have a cold. I mean, my palms are actually sweaty. Mom's spaghetti. We're talking about Madison Beer. <laughs> this was originally going to be a video I made like in the fall of 2022, but then uh, the very lovely Sid Dwyer uploaded his video on Madison Beer and my individuality complex stopped me. And if you haven't already been watching him, you should. Uh, he covers a lot of similar pop culture topics and he has really cute guinea pigs. And then I was gonna make this Madison Beer deep dive, my pre-Bad Cinderella video. But as soon as I decided to do that, she knows that she was releasing a memoir in the spring. But I will not be silenced anymore. We can finally talk about how she was supposed to be in the video, but she was in Miami and so much more. So strap in folks. So as some of you may know, I actually lived in Germany for a while, which I think makes me cool. But for a while, part of my I've been to Europe, I'm cooler than you superiority complex came with the ability to say, yes, I speak German when people would ask me if I spoke German. And I thought that that was still the case until I went to Germany this summer and realized that I had forgotten almost all of what I had learned before. And that is where today's sponsor, Babbel, comes in handy. Babbel is one of the top language learning apps in the world, and it is scientifically proven to help you start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. Babbel is really focused on teaching you real world conversations, things you might actually need if you're traveling to a country that speaks another language. Babbel has a few different subscriptions you can choose from, whether you just want to learn a few phrases for a trip that you're going on, or you want to learn for a lifetime with their lifetime subscription. And right now, if you use the link in my description, you can save 60% off your Babbel subscription. So thank you to Babbel for sponsoring this video, or should I say, Danke, and let me know in the comments what language you want to learn so we can all have a superiority complex about being multilingual. Ich heiße Ashley, and let's get back to it. Madison Beer was born on March 5th, 1999. Madison was named after the main character from the 1984 movie Splash, and fun fact, that is also where the name of Splash Mountain comes from. We don't know how early Madison got into modeling and acting, but we do know that at just four years old, she won a contest and was on the cover of Child Magazine. She was the child. And when Madison was just 12 years old, her mom's friend invited her to sing at a real recording studio in New York City. Madison's mom, Tracy, posted some of the covers she performed there to YouTube. One day, her cover of At Last is retweeted by the one, the only, Justin Bieber. I'm not sure if you all have heard of Madison Beer yet. No. It's not a beverage. It's a young lady with quite a set of pipes. She's getting a really big push from Justin Bieber. He tweeted out some links to her videos on Tuesday and he summed her up, her talent, in one word, tweeting simply, wow. And here's why. After Bieber retweeted a little tune called Call Me Maybe by a then relatively unknown Carly Rae Jepsen, she became a star and the song became a summer hit. Now Carly Rae is following Madison Beer on Twitter. Uh, I wonder if she'll call her maybe. Call me, call me. There's Spencer. Call Have me your maybe. people call my people. Call me maybe. Madison Beer, cool, refreshing, low calorie, very talented, <laughs> gorgeous girl at 13. And just like that, Madison got a record deal with Island Records. She was managed by Scooter Braun and was officially Justin Bieber's protege. Her mother quit her job and moved her and her brother out to LA to start Madison's music career. But the story is not as straightforward as it seems. And even this first story I'm telling you has its controversies. See, what I just said isn't a straightforward lie, but Madison's career was not as accidental as they made it out to be at the time. Madison was just singing covers at a studio, but her mom wasn't just posting them to YouTube for like her grandparents to see. Tracy was also posting these to Facebook and her family was pretty well off, pretty connected. So Tracy was asking her Facebook friends if any of them could connect her with somebody in the music industry who could get Madison a music career. And it just so happened that one of Tracy's Facebook friends knew Scooter Braun and was able to introduce the two. So Scooter, Madison, and Tracy were already in talks about signing Madison onto Island Records when Justin Bieber retweeted her cover. And Madison has always said that no one at Island Records 
made Justin retweet her video and that that was a genuine surprise to her. Although to be fair, I don't know how she can know what Scooter told Justin like when she wasn't there, but Scooter had shown Justin the videos of her. Justin didn't just like stumble across her videos in his like suggested tab. And because this part of her story wasn't public knowledge until much later in her career, this became the perfect industry plant conspiracy theorist for teenagers on Tumblr who saw someone their age getting a record deal getting to hang out with Justin Bieber instead of them, damn it. For one, people found a picture of her at a fan event with Justin from before she had been discovered by him. So some thought that they were already friends or already knew each other, even though Justin presumably meets thousands of 12 year old girls every day and would not remember her even if he had met her before. But Far more people were certain that Scooter Braun was actually close friends with Madison's parents and that they had essentially bought a record deal for Madison. And I want to make this clear, there's no actual proof that that's true. And even though Madison's parents do seem to have money, there's still not enough reason for like Scooter to stake oh, so much of his career and Justin Bieber's career into a random kid if he didn't think that she had at least like some potential to make money too, you know? But the conspiracy theorists will point out that one time, Scooter Braun was photographed with a woman. And Tracy Bear just so happens to be a woman. Yeah, so there's this photo of Scooter from when he was in college next to this lady who vaguely resembles Madison Beer's mom. So naturally, this is conclusive proof that Tracy and Scooter have been besties this entire time. It's honestly crazy just how widespread this rumor and picture is because Madison has correctly pointed out that Tracy didn't go to Emory University, Tracy herself has said that she'd never been to Atlanta, and Tracy is 10 years older than Scooter. So unless she was like hanging out with college kids in Atlanta as a 30 year old woman with kids, this probably isn't her in the picture. All right, I realize that this is quite the detour, but before we get into Madison's music career, which we will get into, uh, we simply have to talk about Madison Beer's bat mitzvah party. I mean, I don't make the rules. Actually, I do, but we we simply have to. First of all, you know it's good when Madison's own fan wiki has an entire page dedicated to this legendary bat mitzvah. This was a little after she went viral on YouTube, so there may have been some scooter money influencing this party, but I also kind of have a feeling that her parents were just wealthy and hey, go off, it makes for an awesome bat mitzvah party. <laughs> the theme was Madison's Square Garden and it was held in what appears to be just a giant castle in New York. It is just so 2012 core with the black, white, and pink colors. Like this was the exact color palette of my bedroom at this time, except it's missing the critical zebra print. <laughs> According to her wiki, there was a four layer cake and the main course for the evening was sushi. Madison performed her own original song, Life is a Beach for her guests. And as party favors, they all got shirts that said Madison Square Garden on it. Madison, please, please release this shirt as merch. I will so buy it immediately. Also, Haley Baldwin was there. Yeah, Madison's been friends with Haley Baldwin like way before she was famous. Their parents actually went to college together. And the fact that Madison ended up being Justin Bieber's protege was just a, a big coincidence. Or if you're deep into the Haley Baldwin conspiracy TikToks, it was all part of Haley's master plan from the beginning. Step one, get childhood friend to become viral sensation and signed with Justin Bieber's label. Step two, marry Justin. It's foolproof. But let's get into it. Even though her early career was a whirlwind, it really is not a time that Madison remembers fondly. I mean, she was 12, 13 years old and she could not have known what she was getting into. I mean, first of all, she wanted to sing ballads and start a serious career, but obviously a major record label didn't want to have like a baby R&B singer. They wanted her to be a, a Disney kid, essentially. To that end, Cody Simpson re-released his song Valentine as a duet with Madison, which debuted on Radio Disney, but was never officially released. On September 12th, 2013, Madison's debut music video for Melodies was released. This video had a cameo from Justin Bieber and some very subtle product placements for beats because this is 2013. And honestly, it's a cute little song. Madison has not been shy about her dislike for it, mostly for the reasons we discussed earlier, 
But I mean, for a 14 year old girl, I think she did a great job. Even when she was filming the music video, she just knew that the song and this brand that she was stepping into was, was not for her. And the song often gets described as a flop because like it didn't chart or anything, but it has over 28 million views on YouTube. And like, this is just the beginning of her career. Like the best I'll probably ever be able to do is that one yogurt video. So I'm <laughs> I'm not gonna call this song a flop. She also became a brand ambassador and model for Ralph Lauren. The first time she performed Melodies Live was actually at a Ralph Lauren fashion show. And if you went to Ralph Lauren's website, you could download Melodies for free. <laughs> Also in 2013, she became the new face of Monster High and shot a music video for a song where they sing about how they're all monsters in Monster High, except besides one zombie, there are no monsters in this school. I mean, if wearing a blue wig and having pronouns makes you a monster, uh, watch out for my comment section, I guess. But the way Madison looks in this music video with like the blue clip and extensions and everything is truly how I wanted to look when I was in middle school. And again, as a reminder, I look like this. If my mom had just let me have blue clip and extensions and Heelys, I would probably be a whole other person and much cooler and probably not on YouTube, so sorry. Also in the behind the scenes of this music video, Madison tells us one of her freaky habits and get prepared y'all, it's, it's pretty freaky. I have a really weird habit that when I get either like nervous or like excited or like, I don't know, like if something's gonna happen, I, I've been doing it since I was a kid, I like take my hands like, like that and I just put it. But not everyone was thrilled about Madison being the new face of Monster High because it should be me. I deserve to be up there. I mean, because Madison isn't a true Monster High fan. Surely this child can't sing for this corporate brand unless she can name five songs and recite 10 fun facts. She says her favorite is Frankie Steen, but if she was a real fan, she'd be able to remove her limbs independently and be immune to lightning, just like her idol. There's this really unfortunate clip where Madison is at a premiere of one of the Monster High movies, and the interviewer asks her to describe what the movie is, and oh man, bless her heart. Can you tell me about this DVD? This DVD is uh, the Frights Camera Action movie. It's just about how they go to Hollywood, or like, what is it in the movie? Le Le Hauntlywood, yes. So it's, uh, they go to Hauntlywood and they're trying to like make it and stuff. And I really like uh, when they like walk the carpet. You can see the photos here. They're like walking the carpet. It's super cute. So it's like you kind of. Kind in the of, DVD you know. <laughs> yeah. Just, <laughs> I love it. She's like that kid in your group project in high school who's clearly like reading the slides for the first time on presentation day, but she is giving it her all. And if that wasn't bad enough for the 12 year old goths everywhere, Madison got her own custom doll. Madison Fear was a one of a kind doll. First of all, incredible name, very good job. And this doll was a huge deal because I believe it's one of the only official custom Monster High dolls and it wasn't made available to the public. People thought that Madison was ungrateful for getting such a unique collector's item or that she didn't deserve the doll. Others have claimed Madison said the Monster High era was cringe and that she hated it, which I think is just a telephone version of her saying that she didn't like the beginning of her pop career and that's not a secret. But a few years afterwards, pictures surfaced online of the Madison Fear doll and it wasn't Madison who was posting them, it was just some random person on the internet. Uh, to this day, no one really knows what happened to the Madison Fear doll, but the general fan consensus seems to be that Madison sold the doll at a private auction, which was again the ultimate betrayal for Monster High fans. I don't know, sorry if this is insensitive to the Monster High fans out there, but if Madison did sell her doll, I mean I think that's kind of iconic. She was 15 when she started working with Monster High, and given how she's spoken about her early career, how she didn't have a lot of control about the project she was taking on, and it didn't really feel like stuff that was true to her. I think she felt like she had to take this big opportunity with Monster High, even if it like wasn't her thing. At the end of the day, you don't have to adore a brand to work for them. Like sometimes you're just doing a job. And if she didn't want to hold onto this doll that she associated with a really negative time in her life, like, so what? <laughs> And at least if she did sell it, it probably went to an actual Monster High fan who would really appreciate having the doll. I know if she did have it, people would be mad that she was like hoarding this doll. Like there's no way Madison could have won <laughs> in this situation. I am still dying to know like who actually ended up with this doll and how long it took for her to sell it. Like, did she wait a few years or was it just an immediate like, whoop, 
finally an unsolved mystery to rival the Danimal sweepstakes. In 2014, she was in her only feature film, Louder Than Words. She's only in it for two scenes, and most of that time is spent with her singing What the Hell by Pink in the Woods. But a solid performance. She also released her second single, Unbreakable. Interestingly, I think this is the only music video of her like older music that she's deleted off her channel, but you can still find re-uploads of it. I feel like I say this for everything that Madison does, but this music video is just like so of its time. It's so 2014 with the color smoke and the jean shorts and everyone's sad with balloons. Was that a trope in 2014? Sure. It just feels like Madison always managed to be like the blueprint with her aesthetics. Like she, she did not miss. In this next chapter, we will be discussing SA and you can skip to the next chapter if you do not want to hear about this topic. When Madison was 13, she was Snapchatting a childhood friend, a boy that she liked. And she didn't realize at the time that there were third-party apps that allowed you to screenshot Snapchats uh, without the person noticing. I mean, Snapchat's design was just made to prey on people, but that's something for another day. Two years pass, and at this point, she's already living in LA when she gets a text from one of her friends in New York saying, hey, someone just sent me a video of you holding your boobs. She starts getting more and more texts about this, and she calls the boy she originally sent them to. And he denies leaking them, but even within a few hours, one of her friends from Florida calls her and says that their whole school has seen the video too. So Madison is just going around to whoever she can, uh, begging them to delete the videos, but within the day, it's already on the internet. Madison was waiting for her mom to pick her up from dance practice when she sees a tweet saying, DM me for Madison Beer's nudes. Madison immediately DMs the person and says, Please delete your tweet and please don't send it to anyone. Please, I'm just a kid who made a mistake. That person immediately blocks her and it spreads everywhere. The most heartbreaking part to me anyways is how Madison talks about how her team and her parents handled this news. She said, facing my parents, specifically my dad, was horrific. I will never forget his face when I got home. My parents had never looked at me that way before. For the rest of the day, I couldn't look my dad in the eyes. The three of us sat on my mom's bed, my manager on the phone, discussing what our next steps would be. My dad buried his face in his hands, rubbing his temples every time my manager spoke. It felt endless. The humiliation only snowballed. The sentiments being tweeted were the same things I heard from my parents and manager when they found out what had happened. Everyone was upset with me, ashamed. Telling my parents the truth was mortifying enough. But it was just as crushing to hear how disappointed my team was. I was 15 years old, being made to feel like my one mistake would not only cost me my entire career and future, but also ruin the reputations of all of the people who worked on my team. I'm sorry, but all of these adults can fuck right off. Uh, Madison was the victim of a crime, and instead of supporting her, these grown-ups are making her feel like she not only ruined her own career, but all of these other people? Absolutely insane. And on top of that, her team told her to just deny that the video was of her, which only made people talk about it more because now they're going to try and like match the mole M Madison has on her shoulder to the one in the video and debunk Madison's claims. Also, other videos started going around of girls who looked like Madison, but were much more graphic. And Madison was stuck in this place where she couldn't say, oh, that's not me, but the other one is. And because she was denying all of them and people could kind of tell that she was at least lying about one of them, everyone just thought all of those videos were of her anyways. Almost all of the money she had made up to that point went to paying for an internet sheriff whose job it was to erase this video from the internet every time it popped up. But for some reason, Madison describes personally scouring through the internet and like, sending links of the video to the internet sheriff for him to delete wherever she finds it. And you would think that part of the sheriff's job would be to locate the video for her so that she doesn't have to go through that like horrifying experience. I mean, it truly should have been anyone's job besides Madison because that just like sounds awful. Because the context in which she was finding this video reposted around the internet was horrific. I also didn't mention this earlier because I wanted all of these triggering conversations to sort of all be 
together so people who needed to skip them could. But Madison has also more recently spoken about how she was repeatedly abused as a very young child for years and at 14, she was assaulted at a party in LA. Madison doesn't go into much more detail than that, and so I will not dwell on that either. But that is another important piece of context to this whole situation. This is all happening to a very young child who has already been the victim of abuse multiple times. And even if that were not the case, what she went through was awful, and the adults around her failed her, and the public failed her. In 2020, she was informed by her manager that the video had once again resurfaced, but this time on International Women's Day, she decided to make a public statement. When I was around 14 and exploring my body and sexuality, I sent very private Snapchats of my body to a boy I really liked at the time. I sent these at 14, thinking I could trust the boy as we had known each other for years and shared feelings for one another. But of course, he shared it with all of his friends. Eventually, that video was sent and shared by everyone, it, it felt like. In the entire world, I'd walk into restaurants and be stared at and whispered about. I was told people were ashamed to be working or even friends with me. These videos were even shown to my parents, grandparents, significant people, executives, artists in the music business. It eventually surfaced online. I was distraught and ashamed. This was a traumatizing experience that has instilled intense trust issues in me that I'm still working on to this day. This week on my 21st birthday, I got calls from a few people close to me saying that another video from 2013, sent to that same boy seven years ago, was being sent around once again. If only I could express the trauma and shame that this has reopened for me. All these years I've had perpetual anxiety. I've been in the dark and fearful of this Snapchat re-emerging, as if it was a dirty secret I'll always have to keep, because I was told it would damage my career and wasn't okay. So today, on International Women's Day, I am going to free myself of this weight I carry. I am going to tell my 14-year-old self the following, which I hope may help some of you to be kinder to yourselves as young women. You should not feel shame. You were exploring your sexuality. You were learning. You should not feel like you did something wrong. Shame on those who betrayed your trust and shame on those who shamed you. Throughout this journey, I have learned an extremely valuable lesson, and by talking about this openly, I can finally free myself of the fear and shame that has followed me for the past seven years. Now I can begin to move closer towards being the young woman I want to be. Own your mistakes as a young woman learning about the world. Don't let them define you. Don't let them keep you in fear. Stay safe. To all the people reading this, happy International Women's Day. I don't think I'll ever learn how to transition out of these topics, but now it's time to talk about her probably most infamous relationship, the time Madison Beer dated Jack Alinsky. True Radio Rebels will remember that Jack Alinsky was a member of MagCon, and like the other MagCon boys, he was famous for humping his floor in six-second increments. But he was also part of a duo with his childhood friend Jack Johnson, and those two would do like little dance routines in their car, uh, also for six seconds at a time. In 2014, Madison and Jack would meet through their mutual friend, Nash Greer. Nash Greer presumably just walked right up to Madison and said, you will date Jack Kolinsky from 2015 to 2017. You're getting very sleepy. Pay no attention to the Taylor Kniff goblin in the corner. And after they met, they continued to talk while Jack and Jack were on their first digi tour. The two became official on July 22nd, 2014. And at that time, Madison was 15 and Jack was 17, about to turn 18. But because Jack was a tween heartthrob, they kept their relationship a secret for as long as they possibly could. Because once the 12 year olds from Minnesota found out they no longer had a chance with Jack, I mean, it was all over. They would still be seen in public together with other MagCon members. And so MagCon fans just hated Madison anyways. Fans became especially suspicious when internet icon stalker Sarah took a picture with the two of them at a restaurant in January of 2015. If y'all weren't around for stalker Sarah, I mean, she was the moment. This woman had public beef with Haley Baldwin and Demi Lovato, and she was just like some person on Twitter who found famous people. In March of 2015, Madison and Jack just spent a couple of weeks basically like fucking with their fans. They would post things like, I think it's time I told everyone, dot dot dot, that I like mangoes, these crazy kids. But finally, on March 15th, 2015, one of Madison's fans tweeted asking, when are you going to go public with Jack? And Madison said, 
today. Later that day, they went to the Justin Bieber Comedy Central roast, and finally, Jack Kalinske fans had the confirmation they needed to bully this teenage girl for dating the boy that they liked. And the fans were vicious. She was called endless names that I don't really want to repeat just for dating this boy, wearing certain clothes. I mean, anything she did was a hate crime against Jack Kalinske and his fans. There's one time where she's scheduled to be the opening act for Jack and Jack, and she's having endless panic attacks about it because she's convinced that Jack Kalinske fans are just going to boo her off the stage. And she also said that she was genuinely scared for her safety. Considering the fans who threatened to beat Madison up on a pretty regular basis, it's not the most irrational fear, honestly. So she calls her mom just inconsolable the day before the show and tells her that she can't do it. She says, you have to call my manager, tell him this was a stupid fucking idea. I can't go on stage tomorrow, I refuse. They all hate me so much. But her mom says, I think you got this, but if you want to back out, I will support your choice. You're going to have to be the one who tells your manager, though. You need to explain all of this to him yourself. I can't be your middleman. This is separate from the Jack issue, but why is her mom in a different state? And why is it on this child to explain to her manager that she's having a mental breakdown? Like, I suppose this is tough love to get Madison to perform, and it works, but my, my heart really does, like, break for Madison. She does end up performing and it ends up going well. She doesn't get booed off the stage, but it's just, ugh. One fan was brave enough to say what needed to be said and threatened to physically harm Madison if she saw her. I swear, if I ever see Madison in public, you guys should pray for her. Madison, get the fuck out of LA before I catch you slipping in the streets. If I ever see you in public, I will fuck you up. Word on my mom. Stay away from Jack Kalinske. I will hurt you. The event that's going down right now in the same place from earlier today is close to my house, like three streets away. I want to go choke Madison. I really wish I knew how these two came face to face, but they did. Warning, I mean, you heard those tweets. This girl sounds pretty serious, so... In real life, there's no way that she's gonna hold back. I wasn't gonna do shit because then Dylan's gonna hate me. I see all your tweets. Like, you always say that you're gonna like beat me up when you beat me. What did I do to you? You did something to my friend. Who's your friend? You obviously won't remember her. We could talk in private. We don't have to talk in front of everybody. Like this fight is sponsored by Converse. But the most chaotic part of this story is at some point after this video is filmed. These two make up and this girl becomes a Madison Beer fan. Something tells me this child is a Gemini. In August of 2015, Madison was featured in a Jack and Jack music video with Ali Simpson. I can't lie, I hate the song with every fiber of my being. Who wears short shorts? In September of 2015, Madison herself actually collabed with Jack and Jack for their song all for love. This music video is basically Madison and Jack Kalinske making out on a car, and then Jack Johnson is like, she's the only one who keeps me off Instagram and Twitter, yo. But you want to know who had some thoughts on this music video? You want to know who was even more mad than the MagCon stands that Madison was dating Jack instead of them? Taylor Kniff. After the All For Love music video comes out, local jar of radioactive mayonnaise Taylor Kniff posts Jack J out there third wheeling too hard. <laughs> I feel like you can't say these tweets out loud without making this face the whole time. Uh, when Madison sees a screenshot of this tweet, she responds, attention seeker. And that is when Madison really crossed the line. He's like radioactive egg, egg salad. I don't know. He says, I'm the one who loves attention. But then again, I haven't hooked up with half of MagCon to be relevant. Damn, chill, young Kniff. Not him congratulating himself in third person. But uh, Madison really brings it home with this and tweets, why be racist, sexist, homophobic, or transphobic when you can be quiet? Madison, I'm making another merch request. I want that on a t-shirt. <laughs> you know, at this point, Jack Alinsky unfollows Taylor, which presumably is what prompts this you now from Taylor Kniff. When someone asks him what he thinks of Madison Beer, he hits her with this zinger. If you want to know my thoughts on Madison Beer, use her last name is just like beer. You'll throw it up five days later and you'll find something new. A little tension seeker. 
That was pretty good. Madison beer, you drink her, and then you'll puke her up two days later, or pee her out. Just means she sucks. In case you couldn't understand that linguistic nuance, uh, he's just saying that she sucks. He then, of course, proceeds to double down on Madison being a homie hopper. He first says that she's hooked up with Cameron Dallas, immediately takes that back and says he doesn't know or care if she hooked up with Cameron Dallas, and then again says that she hooked up with Cameron. This girl has literally got with Cameron. I don't know if she's got with Cameron, dude. I don't care. I have no, I do not care about people's relationships life, but I'm just like you guys. So she was with Cameron and then she was with Hayes and then she was with, um, hanging around one of the other guys and then Jack. It's just like, she might as well just be, you know what I'm, she might as well just be the athletic trainer uh, for a basketball team and she's dropping around to every single player. But whatever, um, she's out there homie hopping like there ain't nobody's problem. Uh, Jack John, Jack G unfollowed me because of my comments. It's like, dude, you're losing yourself. You're crazy. Like you're literally, like I would never do like the bros before hoes, but it's like family. You know what I'm saying? Like we built such a strong friendship that he would do that. But it's whatever. He'll find out in like two months, like who was right. You know what I'm saying? And I promise you that. Listen, Taylor would never do the bros before hoes, okay? It's family before hoes, which now that I think of it also includes bros, but it's the principle of the thing. And even though Jack Galinsky had already unfollowed Taylor at this point, Taylor then posts an old picture of Taylor and Jack together and captions it, love you, Jack Galinsky. I mean, what, what a guy. Sadly for mostly for Taylor, really. Uh, this is not the last time he decides to unnecessarily just bully Madison on the internet. While back in Indiana for his hearing on the multitude of felonies he'd been charged with at the time, he goes on you now and bless this person, someone baits Taylor into doing a freestyle rap about Madison Beer. Rap about Madison Beer? Oh God, this is gonna get thrown up on like World Star, I think. Man, I can't do it to him. I can't do it to him. I might have to come back and do it to him. I'm kidding. I don't know. I think it's just funny because you guys take it so crazy. Okay, I'm getting ready to get off here. I love you guys. I'll hit you with one more freestyle. Yo. Okay, yo. Yo, getting ready to spit a flow like I'm Jack J, but you never know what I'm doing. I'm slipping on the lemonade. Yeah, I'm pretty crazy. Yo, they call me Madison Beer. Homie hopping next year. I'll probably want Nash Greer. What? That's pretty crazy, yo. You fucking crazy, ho. I'm getting on this bitch and I'm spitting on this flow. Damn, I just hit him with that, though. I know in two weeks that be up on World Star. What? I'm a man, dude. I'm gonna be the next star. What? Take me to the top bar. Spitting low too much bars. They should send me to Mars. What? I'm a great A. Brady. What? I'm a great like I'm Tracy McGrady. Shooting threes all day. I'm never crazy. What? what? Spin it back. Take it back. Got your girl in the back and she's on the booty pole. I'm dancing and I'm in the studio. What you crazy? What you never know? What? What? And he would have gotten away with it too if his dad hadn't logged into his account and immediately deleted the live stream because Taylor was cussing too much. God damn it, my dad just messaged me and told me to delete that. He said I cuss too much. Let me see if I can get it back. My dad just deleted my new YouTube video because I'm cussing in it, oh my God. Hold up, my dad deleted my video, fuck, damn it. My dad always deletes my stuff, let us laugh. I am re-uploading that. There's no reason for any of that nonsense. Freaking gay. Yeah, class act, this guy. And then, he wasn't done. <laughs> then Taylor posts a picture of himself with a trash can and tags Madison Beer in the picture. For whatever reason, calling her a whore and a homie hopper was fine, but this <laughs> was too far even for Taylor, apparently. And this is the one thing he seems to actually publicly apologize for. He posts, the way I acted was childish and I apologize, Madison. I take jokes too far sometimes. I don't think about how my comments may make others feel. I am sorry, but I do understand that sometimes apologies do not make everything better, but it is a start. I apologize once again. Love, Taylor. But what drives me crazy, I can't even imagine how Madison feels, is that this rumor that Madison has hooked up with half of MagCon 
persists to this day. This idea that she was a MagCon groupie clout chaser, truly it all just stems from like this little goblin king. I mean, it was bad enough Madison had to hang out with this man child when her and Jack were first dating. She has suffered enough, y'all. All right, another content warning for this next portion, we will be discussing abusive relationships. And again, you can skip to the next timestamp if you do not want to hear about that. In June of 2017, a Twitter account popped up called Hacked Madison. On June 30th, the account posted, if you want to see Jack Jelinski abusing Madison Beer, get this to 50 retweets. The account also began posting a bunch of unreleased pictures of Madison and Jack to prove that the person had hacked into Madison's iCloud account. The hacked Madison account said they had it on good authority that Madison and Jack weren't together anymore and that Jack had been abusive towards Madison in public at LA parties. But then the account posted audio files of Jack and Madison in an argument. And again, another warning, these are rough to listen to. Solely to piss you off. Solely to piss you off. Solely. I'm not gonna touch you, I'm not gonna move. Just solely to piss you off, I'm gonna stand right here and talk. And then later I'm gonna tell you what's up. Because you're a fucking slut. You're a fucking fuck. slut. I and I don't fuck. give two fucks either. Not my boyfriend no, 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 no. That's the thing. I don't wanna be your boyfriend. No, no you're a fucking slut. You're a slut. You're a slut. Listen, listen, look at me. You're a slut. You're a slut. You're a little slut and you haven't told me about something, huh? Oh, you haven't told me about something, huh? And your two little friends, your two little friends know a lot. And she's giving me the wide eyes. She's like, oh, fuck. You're about to expose her. You're about to expose her right now. Johnson, come you're here. crazy. Johnson, you're crazy. Being insane though. The things you're saying to your girlfriend are like out of control. Am I too? You're not my friends? girlfriend, right. Madison. I know, but so why are you saying that? Why were you my girlfriend? Then why are you wasting your time? Then just stop. Okay, but like think, think. When I turn on, when I turn on the music, when I turn on the music, what made you say, hey yo? This dude's got shitty music. I was joking. Okay, but what made you say that? I was joking. But imagine if you never said that. What what would be happening I, right now? I'd still be addicting at some point. The next one you're drunk, you're a sick mess. Yeah. 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 You get it. Really. I'm sure I'm sure I'm sure I'm Who's going to be with me tomorrow? I'm over it. Let me I'm guess, over it. Madison. I'm over it. Let me guess, Madison. Wrong. Hey, who's going to come back to Jack? Any guy I fucking want. And guess what? Who can get any girl they fucking want? Probably not. Except that you're too Have a good day. Have a good day. But baby, listen to me. Really. Have a good time. Then go fuck every girl. I will literally call the police on you. Walk call out. the police on yeah, me? What am I doing? Because you're being annoying. Being annoying. annoying. Oh, you're hey, this boy's being annoying. annoying. Come arrest him. Like, fuck you, bitch. Yeah, I heard some shit too, Mad. Yeah. You're get your ass beat by a girl. I promise that. After these audios were posted, the hashtag Jack Galinsky is over party started trending worldwide. The account also later alleged that Jack was also physically abusive towards Madison and the severity of it all had pushed Madison into harming herself. Initially, Madison didn't respond directly to the leaks and she instead pinned one of her old tweets, which said, flowers grow back even after they've been stepped on and so will I. But eventually, her and Jack posted statements. Madison tweeted out, Many of you have been asking me, why would you stay with them if it happened last year? My theory was, and as horrible as this is, is that if I left him, he'd do it to the next girl. I tried to fix him. We have both grown and changed so much at this point, and it has been an extremely difficult thing to relive or even go through. And I hope all of my fans learn from my foolishness. If someone is mistreating you in any way, please speak up. And then Jack also released his own statement. There's no justifying the words that came out of my mouth in that audio file. In no way do I stand behind who I was in that part of my life. But people change and learn from their mistakes. The clip you've all heard is from last year. I was in a very dark place and clearly had no control over my emotions. It's painful for me because most people think that this clip is current and is an accurate representation of where Madison and I stand today, when that is far from the truth. Like any couple, Matt and I have had our fair share of ups and downs. This clip specifically being one of our lowest points. Madison knew if she didn't help me overcome my ways and change, no one would. And I would never learn from my mistakes. I'll never be able to thank her enough for believing in me the way she did during that time. As terrible and unforgivable as the words I said to her in that clip were, we worked through it together as a couple. And even though we aren't together now, she is someone that I will love forever and care about regardless of where we are in our individual lives. In no way do I expect to be forgiven or felt bad for. 
I'm at fault for all of my actions, and I know better than to treat a woman, or anyone for that matter, the way I did. I am truly sorry to all of my fans or anyone who used to gain inspiration from me. That is not the person I am today, and I do not want anyone to think it's okay to act the way I acted in that clip. It's unfortunate because I've worked so hard to learn and grow from where I was at that point in my life, and now I'm forced to remember the dark time in the most public way possible, learn from my mistakes. If you're going through something right now, just talk to someone. There's no need for anyone to get hurt. Since day one, all I've wanted to do was spread positivity, and that's what I'm going to continue to try to do. But that was not the end of it. Jack Johnson tweeted out, Snakes get exposed. Just wait. And unfortunately, this was not a teaser for Jack and Jack's collab on Reputation. Believe it or not, it, it was worse than that. Uh, Jack made his video exposing Madison on the Burner YouTube account he had only previously used to apologize for all of his horrifically racist tweets. As you probably know, a video got leaked recently, leaked by an iCloud hacker, um, where G's calling Madison a slut, you know, repeatedly and just saying some generally nasty stuff towards her. What my man G said was not cool. You can't be saying shit like that to your significant other in any circumstance. All I'm gonna do is lay the facts out on the table for you guys, and you can take it as you will. I've been around their fights for the past three years, and I know how this shit really goes down. It's never been a one-sided thing, and honestly, this video is the first time I've ever heard Madison hold her tongue in an argument. So G's like, yo, we're on good terms, I'm just gonna post an apology and, you know, hope for the best, because, like, what else can I do? Like, I just kinda got fucked by this audio clip. Just makes him seem like a shitty person, so all he could really do was own up to it at this point. He literally makes Madison look like a great fucking person. Like, amazing. Like, she literally won the internet at that point. All she had to do was not post that bullshit fabricated statement that she put out yesterday, and I probably would have left it at that. But after seeing her blatantly lie to the world, and after seeing these receipts I'm about to show y'all, I just, I could not let that slide. This shit makes Glinsky look like somebody who he's just not. Point blank, period. This toxic relationship was fully mutual, and her trying to act like some angel, just like some perfect, pure angel that helped Glinsky out of this dark spot in his life, is just, I'm not gonna let that fly. So I start DMing yesterday with uh, two of these three girls in like separate DM conversations. We're gonna call these two girls the receipt goddesses because you know, they're the ones who bless us with these receipts. She starts DMing me, so yo, I wanna tell you the truth behind the Madison hacked account. I was sent this. This uh, is Madison talking to the fans that she had set up the hacked Madison account and leak all this stuff. Here we have Madison writing a message in third person, which is just already weird as fuck. Um, that she wants these girls to put on the hacked account and make it seem like it's coming from a source. Keep in mind, this account's deleted now. And the fact she's trying to get people to sympathize with her over some shit that's not even true? What are you doing, yo? You see, that snake Madison had made Jack Jelinski look like an awful person by exposing the things that he said and did. So, of course, the hashtag Madison is over party started trending. Madison did admit to being behind the hacked account, but emphasized that the audio clip was real and what she went through was real. And notably, Jack Johnson never disputed any of the actual allegations against his friend in that video. I mean, sure, lying is bad, but I would argue talking to your partner like that is worse. I'm sure it was a toxic relationship. Maybe Madison wasn't a good partner all the time either. I mean, I don't know that. But if you're more heated about the way someone exposed your friend's abusive behavior than your friend's actual behavior. I just think that says way more about you than anything. But somehow, after all of this, in November of 2019, Jack and Madison were spotted on a date in LA and were actually seen together a number of times well into 2020. They were never public officially again, but they did seemingly get back together at least for some amount of time. But then by 2021, both Madison and Jack were in new relationships. And of note, Jack's significant other, Geneva Natalia, was actually one of Madison's old friends. Sometimes the internet refers to Geneva as like Madison's best friend, but it's weirdly hard to find a lot of pictures of Madison and Geneva together, so I'm not sure how actually close the two of them were. But on some level, one of Madison's old friends now has a kid with Jack Jelinski. I mean, from start to finish, this relationship just seemed like a total emotional roller coaster. And I think at least one of the lessons here is don't trust a man who humps the floor for clout. This is far less serious, a bit of a, a needed mood shift, maybe. Um, but while I was editing the footage from 
the earlier part of this video, I found this other thing that Madison was in from 2015, and I don't have any more information on it than the trailer, but I just feel like I have to show you all. It's been 23 years since anyone's seen the Sanderson sisters. Guys, I'm scared. They said they were gone for good. Legend has it that only a virgin who lights the black flame candle can bring the Sanderson sisters back to life. So let's light the sucker and meet the old broads. Nominated for two Academy Awards for Best Weave in a Feature Film and Best Trap Musical. I don't put a spell on you. I put a spell on you. Next, we have Madison's friendship with another one of our celebrity deep divees, Kylie Jenner. Kylie and Madison first started hanging out in 2013, and from the looks of it, Kylie was kind of in her Regina George era. I mean, first, Kylie posts this vine, which I cannot stress enough, vines are six seconds long, so... <gasps> Madison. Madison. I know. <laughs> she was great. If you didn't catch that, Stassi is on the phone with someone, and she says Madison, and then Kylie says Madison's name, and then they both burst out laughing, and then you hear Stassi at the end say, I know she's crazy. But then the next day, on Madison's 15th birthday, Kylie posts another vine of her out to lunch with Stassi, Jordan, and Madison. And it's everyone else giggling, and then for half of a frame, Madison just looks miserable. <laughs> Which, on its own, was maybe nothing, like maybe she was just sitting there. But then later that night, Madison posts a picture of her crying and captions it, I hate being upset, especially on my birthday. And we don't see these two hanging out for a couple of years, but eventually they seem to reconcile and begin hanging out publicly again in 2017. And in March of 2017, Madison teases a potential collab with Kylie's makeup brand to The Hollywood Fix. I'd show you that, but The Hollywood Fix has repeatedly tried to copyright claim hours long video of mine for using like 10, 20 second clips of them. So that was the gist of it. Sorry, you're not seeing that clip. Anyways, in September of 2017, Kylie releases a purple eyeshadow palette and Madison tweets, when someone fully steals your idea and what they come out with was supposed to be a collab. Madison also later tweets some pictures of her in purple eyeshadow at what looks like some sort of photo shoot. And you can see the timestamp of those photo shoots are May of 2017. Then, she unfollows Kylie. Kylie Cosmetics being accused of ripping off other people's ideas? I could never imagine. <laughs> All right, next we have maybe the most ridiculous rumor about Madison. The time Madison supposedly bullied a gay kid into unaliving himself. And to be clear, I'm not making this uncomfortable smile at the concept of like gay kids unaliving themselves. I'm, I'm making this face at like the sheer audacity of this rumor and like the source of it, it just, gets me. This rumor really spread around in 2016, and on top of bullying this child, Madison also supposedly scheduled her epic bat mitzvah that we discussed earlier, the day of this child's funeral. Now, why do you have to sully the good name of Madison's bat mitzvah? That was a day of joy and celebration for us all. But the reason that this rumor persists is because it did happen in a Wattpad story. The story was called Breakable, which is a, a play on Madison's song, Unbreakable, and told the story about how Madison is just an awful human being. Madison Beer has never been nice. Back home, she'd bullied, but that never stopped her regret. The things she did were wrong, but she had paid for a career on her hands. She might as well make the most of it? I mean, that's just called having a positive attitude. Sadly, this fan fiction was excluded from the Wayback Machine, so we don't know how the rest of the story goes, but I can promise you that this rumor is not true. Madison was homeschooled from the time that she went viral when she was 12, so there's really not a window of time that she could have bullied a kid in school. And I suppose internal homophobia can play a role in something like this, but Madison herself has said that she's a part of the LGBT community and that her grandfather is gay. So like even setting aside the ridiculousness of the story, the odds of anything even remotely resembling this rumor happening are just like 
slim to none. This is unfortunately just one of the many crimes that Wattpad has committed. In 2016, Madison is dropped from Island Records and Scooter Braun is no longer her manager. The debut album that she had been working on was instantly scrapped and any TV or film appearances she was set to make were canceled. The team that she had worked with ever since she was 12 years old left her overnight and it was just Madison and her mom. It felt like a long overdue breakup. It was an amicable split, but no matter how gently I was let down, I still felt like a failure. Like I'd uprooted my entire family and moved to LA just to end up right back where we started. I also lost a team of people around me who I thought were family. I had worked with them for years, only to be dropped and never hear from most of them again. I felt abandoned and I felt like a cash cow, used to make money and then tossed aside the second I wasn't good enough anymore. It was a lot to process at 16 years old. I believed I'd fumbled my one shot at my dream, and I'd spend the rest of my life regretting it. Even though no one explicitly connected the two, I felt a large part of this was due to the news incident. It solidified the shame even more, proving my worst fear, that it would leak into every aspect of my life. I sent a video to a boy I had a crush on, and now I'd lost my entire career as a result of it. And so her mom presents her with the choice of either staying and trying to work as an independent artist or going back home. Don't worry about me or what I think or the work it means I have to do. If you want to keep going, I'm behind you 100% and we'll stay here and figure this out. But that means we're going to have to work our asses off. But if this is too much for you, maybe this is a blessing in disguise. We can go back to Long Island. We'll enroll you in school again. And singing can just be your hobby. You'll still be able to post singing videos for your fans. Going home doesn't mean you failed either, but this is your decision, Madison, because I can't force you either way. You really have to sit with yourself and figure out what you want to do. Being real, if Madison was my kid, I wouldn't have given her a choice. Madison would have been on the first plane home because this child needs a break from the industry. Madison decides that she wants to stay and try working as an independent artist. And even though her confidence was shattered, this was at least an opportunity to break away from that bubblegum pop mold that her label had been trying to put her in for all of these years. She could finally find her own sound and have agency in her own career. And to that end, she would finally release her first EP as a solo artist in 2018 called As She Pleases. My EP As She Pleases was the first step in rebuilding some of my confidence. I still cherish those songs and all they taught me. The title speaks for itself. It was my first try at writing my own music, and all I wanted to do was make music that I liked. It was that simple. In the beginning, writing my own music and becoming more involved in the production process was scary. The reckless confidence I had when I initially started in this industry had been worn down. When I'd tried to give creative input before, I was always shot down, made to feel like it was something I should leave up to the experts. I was terrified of being rejected, of not being good enough. It took years before I could proudly call myself a songwriter. But the most amazing part about gaining confidence as an artist was finally feeling like my music was resonating with my listeners. I was actually putting out music I was proud of. In February of 2016, Madison publicly voiced her support for Kesha during the ongoing lawsuit against Dr. Luke. And for those who don't know, Kesha alleged that she was repeatedly assaulted by Dr. Luke. But Madison's friend and singer Maggie Lindemann tweeted about not believing Kesha and suggested that Kesha might be lying about S.A. to get out of her contract. Madison replies, so sick and wrong, not only being kills, but being then accused of lying kills. Madison later deletes this tweet because she said that she didn't want to give Maggie the free promo, to which Maggie replies, you are so petty. This is why you got dropped. But a few months later, Maggie apologizes for not believing Kesha and Maggie and Madison are spotted hanging out again in April of 2016. And the two are actually still friends to this day. Maggie was one of the opening acts for Madison's life support tour in 2021. And just when you thought you'd escaped him, Scott Disick makes another cameo in our Celebrity Deep Dive series. Basically right after Scott was seen with Bella Thorne in the summer of 2017, he was spotted multiple times hanging out with Madison Beer and Suede Brooks. Scott was 34 at this time, Madison was 18, and Suede was 16. It seems like they mostly just like went to clubs together. There's no pictures of them kissing or anything, thank God. But he did take them out to shop for diamond rings and ice cream one time. Has Scott Disick issued a formal apology for the entire year of 2017? Because 
he should. In 2017, Madison starts dating Zach Bia. I couldn't figure out what it is Zach Bia does or why he's famous, but his Wikipedia says that he's a socialite, DJ, record executive, and club promoter. I mean, I'm a YouTuber, so I probably can't roast him too hard for having made up jobs. Another mystery yet to be solved is how this man continues to date such beautiful women. I, I don't have an answer for that one. But in July of 2018, paparazzi record Madison and Zach having a heated argument outside a restaurant and Madison at one point like shoves Zach. Madison goes on a live stream to defend her relationship and it is uh, uncomfortable to watch. Shoved and slapped him. I didn't slap him once, actually. Not once. If you watch the video, not once. All I did was push him out of frustration, which is wrong. He was like, okay. seriously, chill. Because I was so pissed off about something. Like, couples fight. Let's move on. It's all good. He's, we're still together, so clearly I didn't abuse him. If, if you know, it's like, it's all good. It was in a moment of frustration and anger, and I did not hurt him. I shoved him. Which, again, you guys don't know what goes on behind closed doors. Like, you have no idea what goes on behind closed doors. Like, Judge our whole relationship off one argument we've gotten? That I was mad at him? Like, what if the argument was him mad at me? Would that have ch said he was abusive? Or It's like, come on. Let's just... It's not that big of a deal. Honestly, I don't really know how to feel about this because obviously shoving your partner is not great, no matter the context. Um, and I also at the same time just can't imagine having to like explain a fight you had with your significant other to the public. And like this all relates back to her stuff with Jack Chalinsky and it's um, it's just sad to watch. Uh, but they do keep dating into 2019 and on New Year's Eve, Zach Bia ditches Madison to hang out with Kylie Jenner, which turns into Madison's 2020 song, Selfish. They do break up in 2019, and after all of this, he gets to date Olivia Rodrigo. I mean, I, I don't get it. But I personally need to talk about the best thing Madison Beer has uh, ever been a part of, in my opinion anyways, which started in 2018, and some of y'all are gonna judge me, but it's true. In 2018, Madison Beer becomes a part of the fictional girl group KDA from the video game League of Legends. Now hear me out. KDA was unveiled during the 2018 League of Legends World Championship with four of the characters forming a non-canonical K-pop girl group. They also released a music video with just like insane animation. I'm pretty sure it was animated by the same studio that made Arcane, the League of Legends show, which again, if you know, you know. That show was incredible. I honestly feel bad saying this because I feel like the KDA songs are really not like Madison's style at all. And she definitely didn't write them or anything like that. But they're my favorite songs for Madison. Like I listen to them all the time. <laughs> KDA has released other songs with Madison's voice like switched out with other people and it doesn't sound as good. Like the original four KDA women need to form a real life girl group so I can be their number one fan. And she has this one song with Kim Petras, and you genuinely can't tell when Madison Beer is singing and when Kim Petras is singing. I mean, I shouldn't like it as much as I do, but I do. Now, I wouldn't say League of Legends fans have the best reputation. And much like the Monster High fans, some people were upset that Madison was representing the brand. And for some reason, some people thought that Madison thought that she was too good for League of Legends. And so poor Madison had to, like, publicly defend herself and say like no i'm super grateful to work with them like i i love league they said that you thought you were too good for league of legends oh my god well i'm contractually not allowed to talk about certain things which is not shade like things that are coming so just gonna say that that's incorrect i love league of legends and i'm like abundantly grateful to ever have worked with them and to be continuing to work with them that is not a worry my dear friend so the whole thing was just silly. With all that being said, Arcane Season 2? Put KDA in there. Put Madison on that soundtrack. Put her in the show. If Imagine Dragons can canonically exist in the League of Legends universe, so can Madison Beer. In November of 2018, Ariana released her iconic music video for Thank You Next, which was just filled with celebrity cameos. But I think we can all agree that there was one special someone noticeably absent from the production. 
Am I listening? I actually don't know. I feel like I can't. I hate saying this because then everyone on Twitter is like, "You're lying. I hate you." I was supposed to be in the video. No, I, was, I actually wanted you to be in it because I was in Miami. I know when they were filming it, I was in Miami. But like, she told me the whole concept and was like, "Yeah, like we're doing this whole mean girl thing." And I was in my red room in, in Miami, and I was like, "Fly back to LA right now." Girl. Wait, who are you gonna play? <laughs> and then I just couldn't. So I was my brother, and like I had to, I haven't seen my family in so long. So I was like, "I'm just gonna stay, and I'm gonna miss out on the best thing in my life." But it's fine. <laughs> But it looks so okay, so some very, very necessary context. Basically, for the first few years of Madison's career, she was only ever referred to as Justin Bieber's protege. And then as she got older, it went from being Justin Bieber's protege to being an Ariana Grande, either inspired artist, wannabe, knockoff. Uh, most people were not flattering about the comparison between the two. And especially in 2018, Madison was constantly accused of copying Ariana's vocal style, fashion. The Ariana Grande stands would not let this girl wear pigtails. And Madison has never hidden that Ariana Grande is a huge inspiration for her. And anytime Madison talks about this comparison, she makes a point to say that Ariana Grande is someone who Madison aspires to be. But she also, I think, makes the very valid point that two women can have similar styles and exist without being pitted against one another. They're also just, like, not the same all the time. Like, they both have their hair in ponytails every once in a while and pull from R&B and pop sounds. They both like a spray tan, but, like, that's really all it is. This hasn't been confirmed. This is really speculation on my part. But I'm fairly sure that Madison was supposed to play the part that Gabby DiMartino played in the music video because Gabby had also been accused of copying Ariana Grande. And the music video was like teasing this non-existent beef that fans had picked on between Gabby and Ariana. But Gabby has also said that she was only asked to be in the music video like pretty last minute. No offense to Gabby, Gabby is a pretty well-known figure. But between Gabby and Madison... The drama between Madison and Ariana was a much bigger talking point. I mean, Ariana and Madison, like, knew each other well before this. They'd met, they'd interacted on social media. Like, Madison does seem like the more obvious cameo to play on this, like, everyone is copying Ariana joke. So you know what? I believe her. She was supposed to be in the video. But damn if that audio doesn't make for a good pandemic TikTok. Like I said, I believe her but she just says it the way we all described our boyfriends who go to another school in Canada. And like the crowd hyping her up like just a little too much just adds that like extra oomph. It's like, it's such a good TikTok sound. And even though she missed out on one pop culture moment, you know, she, she made her own. Like, I actually don't know. I feel like I can't, I hate saying this because then everyone on Twitter is like, you're lying, I hate you. I was supposed to be in the video. No. In December of 2018, Madison makes her first appearance in a David Dobrik video. According to her, she had always been a huge fan of David and walked up to him on a red carpet and they became really good friends from there. His version of the story is less sweet. <laughs> Remember when Madison's uh, nudes leaked when she was 15? Well, there was a second video going around that wasn't of Madison, which people thought was Madison. And so David Dobrik, when he saw it, also thought that this video was Madison. And I think this is meant to be a joke, but I don't see the humor in it. He says that he got pleasure out of those videos. There was there was a day where where her nudes leaked, but they weren't your nudes. So I, I feel like I can talk about it. Sure. Still 15 at the time, traumatized and not really wanting my naked body on social media. So, the, so anyway, back to your story. The video I saw wasn't her. <laughs> but, uh, but, but in my mind, <laughs> it was. But 15 year old me was like, that's her. <laughs> and many of my friends told me, David, it is confirmed. That is not Madison. And I was like, you're on. <laughs> um, the tissues in my room say otherwise. <laughs> no. Being the feminist that he is, David tweets out, Hey, can we stop getting mad at this video and just appreciate how beautiful this girl is? Tweet out, I was like, can we stop getting mad at this video and just appreciate how beautiful Madison Beer is? And I tweeted it at her. And she saw it and she followed me because, yeah. Which I have no recollection of, which is so unfortunate. Of course not. I wish because I, I was this. one of 10,000 people that was tweeting about I this video. I was like, oh, this guy's so nice, like supporting me during such a hard time. And yeah. I just followed him. So Apparently, Madison has no memory of this. Madison saw this tweet and followed him. David said that he later did like the block unblock thing so that they would both unfollow each other. 
like at some point after this because I guess he felt weird that they were following each other. Uh, I I really don't get what happened there. So like maybe he is fully making the story up to like be a funny podcast bit, but it's just like it's a weird thing to make up. And because the straights can't process a man and a woman being seen in the vicinity of each other without dating, people began to speculate that Madison and David were secretly together. David also made a joke about Madison being into him, which spiraled into another rumor that David had rejected Madison and that she was desperately in love with him. Madison's only into guys that don't want anything to do with her. That's why she had a crush on me for like eight months. I'm not, I'm not gonna respond. <laughs> this was all pre frenemies and like the Jeff Wittick stuff. So being friends with David Dobrik had a, a different connotation back then. I was kind of hoping that Madison was no longer friends with David after all that stuff happened, but um, they hung out like in 2021, 2022. So uh, I guess they're still friends. Madison, you can do better. That's just my opinion. <laughs> just please, Madison, do not get on any spinning excavators, no matter how many times he asks. In May of 2020, Madison is on Celebrity Drag Race, and I'm not gonna lie, I was <sighs> underwhelmed. <laughs> I feel like she missed a solid opportunity to do something crazy and out there and, like, not Madison. But this just looks like Madison at a slightly conceptual photo shoot. They also show Haley Kyoko's look, like, right before hers, and that really does not help Madison's case. And to make things worse, the drag queen Chanel later tweeted that Madison was a nightmare and the worst client ever. So, so much for Madison's drag career. In June of 2020, Madison is photographed at a Black Lives Matter protest and posts the picture of her to her story, but someone else posted a video of the photo being taken. You can see that the actual protest is maybe a hundred feet from where Madison is, and Madison's just sort of off on a car by herself. And people also notice that the photographer is someone who had photographed Madison before, most recently at her 21st birthday party. She also had her mask pulled down for this photo, which charitably is so that people can see a public figure supporting the movement. Or it's another indicator that this is performative activism, because there were also plenty of other celebrities at various protests who weren't posing for photographs and weren't making an effort to be recognized, in fact, even doing the opposite. The photographer did publicly state, there's rumors spreading around that I was hired by Madison to take pictures of her at the BLM march yesterday. Those rumors are 100% untrue. I was taking pictures at the event and ran into Madison while also marching at the event. Since she's a celebrity, I decided to take pictures of her. I'm a freelance photographer and have been to the event all three days and I ran into her all three days. I just happened to have my camera yesterday. Madison has been to the protest three days in a row and has probably marched and been at the event longer than any other celebrity. But he also responded to people in his DM saying, so what if it was staged? Which, again... <laughs> made people think that Madison had hired him to take this photo. And I mean, this photo was staged in the sense that it was not a candid shot. Madison knew that the picture was being taken. But Madison showing up to a protest just to take pictures and hiring a photographer for that specific purpose versus Madison posing for a photo before Madison joins a protest, which she's genuinely invested in, those are two different things. She denied that these photos were staged and did message with its Keisha explaining more of her perspective on the photo. I'll link that video down below if you want to see its Keisha's perspective on that situation. She also posted her DMs with the photographer asking him why he said it was set up and his response was that he was being sarcastic. I will also add that there is proof that she was at protests before this photo was taken, after this photo was taken, she was tear gassed at one of the protests. And there were other times where she was photographed at the protest where she didn't know her picture was being taken, like she was just there. So although it was maybe strange that she posed for the photo in the way that she did, it doesn't seem like she hired a photographer and then immediately left. She was also protesting and whether that was performative or not is not really a question that I can answer, you know. I don't love talking about this, but I also know we couldn't get through a Madison Beer video without talking about it. All of the cosmetic surgery rumors. People are constantly theorizing how many surgeries Madison has had, and Madison has always denied getting plastic surgery. She has admitted to getting lip filler when she was a teenager, but she says that that's been dissolved and the rest is all natural. And if that's true, 
There's not much more Madison can really say on the subject, but for people who don't believe her, there's this extra level of anger because now Madison might be lying about her appearance being natural and as a beautiful public figure contributing to an unrealistic or unattainable beauty standard for what young girls can or should look like. When Madison Beer is consistently lying about her face and her body and how she's naturally that way, setting unrealistic body and face standards for young women all around the world, I lose my mind. I get so f***ing mad when I see Madison Beer go on live stream and be like, I've never had any work done. I'm so tired of everyone bullying me, saying that I've had my nose and lips done. I've never. It's puberty. Oh, my body is natural. What are you talking about? You are lying to millions of young and impressionable girls and it pisses me the f*** off, Madison. Why would I lie about this shit? I said so long ago, like a minute ago, but it, people choose to ignore what they want to ignore. I said, yes, guys, I got my lips done when I was younger and I fucking regretted it and I hated it and I got them dissolved. This is literally my fucking natural face. Shut up already. It's so annoying. I'm sorry I'm so mad right now. I'm really, I just got really triggered from this eating disorder comment that she made. And like, I'm, I'm fucking so mad right now because I literally, I'm like, I'm about to start crying, bro. Like, I literally have struggled with my appearance, with my fucking body for years. I've been scrutinized for years. And I'm literally now being told that I give false fucking beauty standards. I hope that I'm a role model for you guys. And I try to always say, don't compare yourself to this one. Don't compare yourself to that one. So let me get this straight. You're saying I set an unrealistic beauty standard, but if a girl walked into a fucking coffee shop and you were like, oh, she's so beautiful. I feel ugly because that girl's so pretty and you didn't know she had Botox, are you gonna be like, well, if she has Botox, she's not pretty. Like, I don't understand this logic. Shortly after Madison denied getting plastic surgery on TikTok, Mia Khalifa posted about getting her nose job with the caption, I'd never hide behind a tree. Don't compare yourself to anyone on the internet. You're beautiful. A few hours later, when a fan posted on Twitter wondering whether this caption was meant to be shade at Madison, Mia replied, I will be shading anyone who sets unrealistic beauty standards for young, impressionable fans. Even setting aside any plastic surgery rumors, I do think people put a really unfair amount of pressure on themselves personally and on Madison for not looking like her. I remember during the pandemic especially, but even now, I would constantly see like young girls on TikTok posting about how they're sad that they didn't look like Madison or that they didn't feel beautiful. And Madison will always be in the comments, like, trying to lift them up. But it, like, genuinely evokes a lot of emotion for people. Some people really do get angry because they feel like Madison is lying about her surgery or just setting unrealistic standards with her body, even just as is. And I have to agree with Madison. I don't think it's fair how people project all of their insecurities on Madison and make it Madison's fault. I mean... She is not single-handedly the source of unrealistic beauty standards. And plastic surgery or not, she's always been a pretty girl and she's allowed to post her face and her body on social media just like anyone else. But I also do get that criticism when she photoshops her picture or maybe does get plastic surgery and doesn't say anything. It is different than just like a normal person doing it. People look up to her and want to look like her, whether that's achievable or not. I don't know. It's a very complicated situation, and even though I don't personally care whether she got plastic surgery, I can recognize why it's such a big conversation around her career. In June of 2020, Madison is on Instagram Live and is asked about her favorite book. What's your favorite book? My favorite book is Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov. I definitely do, but we're not going to talk about that. For those of you who don't know, Lolita is a very controversial book about an adult who falls in love with and abuses a child. But the movie versions and really our pop culture idea of this book really downplay that aspect and try to present it as a taboo love story, which is Partly why a concerning amount of people online really romanticized this book. I don't know if that's why Madison feels that way, but I feel like if you read the book itself, whether you think that book should exist, the author is not on that character's side, and it's meant to be an unreliable narrator. You're not supposed to root for this relationship, and it's pretty straightforwardly depicting a non-consenting relationship through the eyes of a sick person 
who presents it as consenting. This is a complicated issue, and if you haven't listened to the Lolita podcast, I recommend it because it really breaks down these sort of cultural ideas of Lolita. Although, of course, warning, it's a very heavy subject matter. But Madison does initially try and defend her stance on Twitter and said, People have their own interpretations. I didn't write it. I just like it and don't see it in the way others might. I've always known it's a controversial story, but I've always said it's my favorite because I just like the story. I like dark stories. Always have. But she did later delete that tweet and release a full apology on Twitter. I thought about last night and I think I was too flippant in my answers and you deserve much more than that. I discovered the book several years ago and honestly, I really should revisit it and read it through a new lens. After thinking about how the book is perceived amongst critics and how it remains a compelling piece of work despite its controversies, I think I have allowed that to color how I have viewed it up to this point. I have a responsibility to you all, and I thank you for being there for me even through the tough conversations. I see now that the book is triggering for some people, evoking a very complicated emotional response, and that for some this book is not just an academic exploration of complicated themes and dark characters. I hope as I learn and mature and have time to study the things I love, like books, film, and art, that I can do better in bringing them to you responsibly and will be able to better express myself. In September of 2020, Madison released her Morphe collab. I mean, Madison has always worn more like natural bronzy makeup. So like this collection does feel like something that she would really use. Way more actually than the Kylie palette she may or may not have worked on. I think the online beauty community has just like really warped my brain. So I guess now I just can't appreciate a, a nude Staples palette, but so. That's just me, I guess. In February of 2021, Madison finally releases her full debut album, Life Support. She co-wrote all of the songs on her album and produced most of them. And because of the pandemic, this album had gotten pushed back pretty significantly. So a lot of these songs are about a really difficult time she had went through in 2019. And actually releasing this music was not easy for her because now she's having to sort of relive these things that she had healed from and planned to sort of talk about publicly in 2019, and it all sort of came back for her. But the album, it seems, was loved by fans, and I know at least a few of the songs went viral on TikTok, and you would definitely recognize a good chunk of them. In June of 2021, Madison launched her own skincare line with Vanessa Hudgens, of all people. Apparently, Madison was really close friends with Vanessa's younger sister, Stella. Eventually, the two decided to go into business together. But this was not just any celebrity skincare line, no. This one involved sending over your DNA to Madison and Vanessa personally, at least, I assume. When it launched, the brand had a $95 skin DNA kit where you would swab your cheeks and then send it back and supposedly, they would know from these DNA swabs which products you should buy from them. You could also take an online quiz, which anyone could take for free. And you didn't need to do the DNA thing to buy products. I don't think products were included in that $95 thing. I think literally just the test was $95. But oh my God, y'all, if you're spending $95 on a DNA kit from Madison Beer and Vanessa Hudgens, at that point, just go to a dermatologist. I promise it will be okay. <laughs> they don't offer these DNA kits anymore. I can't imagine why. Madison left the brand in 2023 uh, to focus on her music career. And the company has like majorly rebranded now with just Vanessa. But there you go. Madison's brief run as a skincare guru. It was something while it lasted. In June of 2021, Madison released the music video for her song, Reckless. The song did incredibly well and reached 50 million streams on Spotify within weeks of release, like the fastest of any of her songs to that point. But on August 2nd, Madison tweeted, I hate my label so much. They do literally nothing to support me or promote me or anything. I even had to fucking basically fund the entire Reckless video myself because they didn't believe in it at all and I'm over the shit. Nobody but my fans are the reason for this. Your support means everything in the world and more. She later deleted these tweets, but it, it genuinely like does suck to hear that even after all of these years, she still doesn't seem to have a positive relationship with the music industry. In August of 2021, Madison launched her fashion collection with Boohoo with 50 different unique pieces. It definitely feels like Madison's style. Like something's never changed. Madison continues to always embody the trends of whatever gear she's in. 
On September 13th, 2021, Madison goes to her first Met Gala, and I don't have much to say about her outfit or anything. I just think this interview with her and Emma Chamberlain, who's hosting for the first time, is really sweet. Can I interview Hi. you? Are you interviewing? I of course, am. I would love that. Okay, amazing. So this is not your first Met. This is my very first Met. I've never been here. Okay, great. Trying not to pass out. I thought I was going to die in the car. Yeah, no, same. But we're here together. We're here. Uh, like, don't you feel more comfortable now that you're here and you're it's, in it? It's a lot less intimidating than I thought it was going to be. Also, everyone's just nice. So I feel good now that we're I'm doing here. Great. I know. We're Tell doing me about it. this. So we really wanted to do something inspired by paying homage to Marilyn Monroe and um, specifically her orange gown she wears. And gentlemen prefer blondes is like my favorite gown of all time. And I really wanted someone who was going to be able to do it exactly how I envisioned it. So we went with um, Patricia Voto, who's incredible, one of a kind pieces. Once the archive fabric is gone, it's never going to happen again. And I'm shaking and we're at the Met Gala. And what's I, know, going on? I know, but that's also like you explain that with like the most ease ever. Did I? Oh gosh, thank you. If I tried to explain my dress right now, like yeah, I would just like, this is Louis Vuitton, correct? This is Louis Vuitton. Stunning. I love this. Like, this is my favorite color. You look Thank incredible. You. I love you. I love you. Have the best time. I'll see you I'm so there. proud of you. On November 8th, 2021, Madison's dad, Robert Beer, was hacked, which some has either been scrapped entirely or are being significantly reworked. And as a result, over 100 songs and demos end up leaking. This includes some old, unreleased music, collabs with Justin Bieber, and music that she is planning to put on her upcoming album. In July of 2022, Madison is in the Bella Porch music video for Dolls, and truly, I'm just mentioning this because I'm jealous. I mean, Ludwig, Hassan, Cherry, Larray, Grimes. I am nowhere near relevant enough to make a cameo, but Bella, I will make myself available. So as y'all know, I was going to make this video much earlier, and I ended up delaying it because I needed to pre-order and patiently await the half of it. Madison Beer's memoir. This won't be a full-on book review. I mean, if you want a more in-depth take on this whole book, I will always recommend Celebrity Memoir Book Club. As I'm sure you've noticed, I've been pulling bits and pieces from this book as we've been going along. And I suppose I'll start with the obvious. When I opened the packet, I was like, where's the other half of it? Yeah, this book is very short. It's around 150 pages and maybe 10 of those pages are journal prompts that Madison included for you to do. And I mean, I wasn't expecting Les Mis or anything. Uh, she was 23 when she wrote this, and so she's not gonna have a ton of life experience to write about. But I mean, here I am making this video about Madison that I'm sure is like well over an hour at this point. It's not like Madison has lived a boring life or there aren't things to talk about with her. But setting aside all that, there are some interesting things about this book, not even on the first page of the first chapter, the first line of the prologue. It's 9.53 on a Wednesday night. I just finished writing the final chapters of this book in my bathtub. And now I find myself here, back at the beginning, meeting you. First of all, now I have to know if she was writing this entire book in her bathtub or if that was just like a celebration at the end. Almost as chaotic as Bella Thorne bringing a typewriter to set uh, to write her own poetry book. I was very surprised that she didn't talk more about her childhood in this book. I mean, if she had filled like 50 pages with her childhood, like before she was famous, we would have all complained about that. But she actually gives very little detail about how she was discovered and like that whirlwind that was her first few years of her career. Like she does describe the emotions of it a lot, but she doesn't really give a lot of specific stories like placed in time. I also thought that she would maybe use this as an opportunity to like clear up how she was discovered, but I get the impression that this memoir is uh, for Madison Beer scholars like myself. Like if you didn't already know who Madison was before reading this, you would probably be lost. I'm sure most people who would want this book are fans of her. So like, that's not a bad thing either. I do think she is, however, very vulnerable about how fame impacted her at a young age, how those traumas we mentioned earlier impacted her at an early age. And obviously she talks about some assault she went through in her childhood that also impacts like how she is now. What made me like really sad is there are a few points in here where she adds footnotes with citations to articles about mental health and trauma when she's talking about why some of the things she went through was as bad as it was. And it just makes me sad because it feels like she put those there because she felt as though people wouldn't take her seriously if she didn't have like these 
academic citations to back up why it was so horrible. And she really doesn't talk about Jack much in this book. She never mentions him by name, and she never discusses like the phone leaks or anything like that. But she does tell stories like the one I mentioned earlier where her fans just like terrorized her as a kid and made her feel very paranoid about her relationship with him and about the relationships she went on to have in the future. I think the biggest theme throughout this book is like just how much fame has really warped these unhealthy patterns in Madison's life. Like there's one very scary story. I, I don't really know what kind of warning to give exactly other than it's just like really heavy and sad where Madison is really anxious one day and she wants to go to sleep and she takes a mixture of a couple anxiety medications and sleeping medications like not for self-harm purposes, just to sleep, but the drugs don't mix well and she starts to feel really dizzy and sick. So she she tells her boyfriend who's there with her and then they call her friend Lena. Lena says, do you need to go to the hospital? Do we need to call 911? Just the suggestion jolted me, like the shock of jumping into freezing cold water. My thoughts spiraled quickly. What if my neighbors heard the ambulance and tipped off a news outlet? What if one of the paramedics knew who I was and leaked it to the press? What if somehow there was a paparazzo outside at that very moment who would get pictures of me taken to the hospital? At the time, even with my thoughts clouded, even when my life could easily have been in danger, I was instinctively more concerned about the potential publicity than I was about my own health. And she does refuse to go to the hospital. She gets checked by paramedics and is ultimately okay, but it's just like, it, it just like breaks my heart. <laughs> Lena, the person she's referencing in that story, uh, is Madison's best friend, and how they met is a story. Make a long and lovely story short, I somehow stumbled across her Instagram account, where she had a post she had written about me as a part of a course she was taking for college. She described, as a stranger, how it felt to watch me grow all of these years. She spoke about my journey and how it resonated with her, and how it pertained to the bigger picture of social media and its impact on young girls. She saw me, she really saw me, more clearly than I believe any person had ever seen me before. I reached out to her after reading what she had written, and honestly, we instantly became best friends. She is such a gift. See, maybe I'm just cynical. I thought that this was really strange, but then I read this to my other friend and she thought it, that it was sweet. I mean, it's their friendship, so like neither of our opinions matter, but I just can't imagine one of you like writing an essay about how misunderstood I am and then like relying on you for like such intense emotional moments. Internet friends are cool. Even being friends with a fan, I'm sure, is like nice in some contexts, but it seems to be like a risky imbalance to me. I don't even know if I can articulate why it makes me feel weird. Am I crazy? Like, y'all let me know. <laughs> Overall, I appreciate that you can see just how much therapy she's been through, and she's very open about her experience with therapy, with her BPD diagnosis, and about mental health. And because this is a book that's primarily like aimed at her young fans, I do really see like a benefit to seeing someone you look up to having like gone through all of these things. She also talks about dealing with addiction. She talks about how she has tried to unalive herself multiple times and how those experiences impacted her. If you do want to hear more about those experiences, I do recommend reading this book because especially those things I don't feel like are necessarily my my story to tell. You can read the book or I know she talks about some of these things in like her interview with Drew Barrymore in like the Call Her Daddy interview, she goes into more detail about these things. But at some points it did feel like some of the things she was talking about, she maybe wasn't fully ready to talk about. And I don't think it's fair to expect every detail or like any details, but part of why this book was so short was that she would only describe like certain things for a few paragraphs or a few pages, and then go back to how social media is bad for self-esteem and how we as fans don't know everything and shouldn't assume a person's character or how well they're doing. And I don't disagree with those points, but it just, it felt a little repetitive. And this is only a 150 page book. So like, that's not ideal. And she's also just super young. So if she ever wanted to go back and like write the other half of it, build on this book when she's more removed from these experiences, like, I think that could be a good read. This definitely wasn't bad by any stretch. And I, again, could not cover everything that she talks about in here. And so if you want to hear more, like I do still recommend it. And that brings us to today. As I'm filming this, she has just announced that her new album is coming out in September of 2023. And she just released a new music video and I really like it. She's got like a real Lana Del Rey vibe 
going in the song. I'm excited for her to like see where her career's going. So yeah, we finally we finally did it, folks. We did our deep dive on Madison Beer. And I'm really happy because I feel like this was another video where I came out like a Madison Beer stand. She seems like generally like a well-meaning person who has like grown a lot and been put through a lot of the internet's bullshit. And she's like still around doing her thing and thriving. And so I, I commend her for that. So that is it, folks. I will again mention that we're very close to 100,000 subscribers. So if you maybe want to subscribe, that would be cool. I am planning a special video for when we reach 100K. So that'll be a good time. You can also hang out with me on Twitch Tuesday and Thursday nights. We have a good time there. And if you like this video, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye. Mm-hmm.